Om Shanti. Are you all happy? Today we are going to say the easiest way to become rich. Not only for one generation, but to accumulate wealth for around 21 generations, more generations. So not only for your children and grandchildren, but for the next 21 generations. The easiest method, and also this is the only method to accumulate wealth for the next 21 generations. Before seeing the method, let's see how people make money and benefit out of it. Think of your crorepati, millionaire, billionaire, they all make huge amount of money but if you look closely into their generations so after the second or third generation you will see some of them suffering from poverty so what happened to the money they accumulated someone in the middle has eaten all that so according to the karma, to the law of karma, it had reached to whomever it has to reach. Let's see at least if that particular person who accumulated wealth is enjoying its benefit. Now we all know after reaching the age of 40 people are getting so many diseases that makes them unable to eat whatever they desire so they can't sometimes if they are very unlucky they may go bedridden they may even enter coma stage even in that case they cannot enjoy that wealth so what is the use of that wealth um, in the worst case scenario they can even die in the middle right so what's the use of that money of the time they spent in making that money so we can't call them as the most intelligent person because they spent every single second of their life in accumulating wealth that's not going to be of any use for them so they cannot be called brilliant so who is brilliant so now we are going to see the smartest way to accumulate wealth and also the safest way so that nobody in the middle takes away that wealth from you so that's the method we are going to see even if you have accumulated wealth for many generations after you die you are not going to enjoy it somebody else is going to enjoy it so what use you get out of that wealth but in this particular method we are going to see the way where only you are going to enjoy the wealth that you, you accumulate now for the next 21 birth nobody can snatch it away from you so as mentioned in Bhagavad Gita about soul that it is imperishable nobody can break it burn it moisten it similarly the wealth that we accumulate through this method the smartest method can never be put on fire never be drowned by floods 
and it will never be taken away by cheating through one of your friends or relatives it's impossible it's absolutely going to stay safe just with you even after you die you will still enjoy it in the next birth no matter where you take birth so only those who accumulate wealth in this way are undoubtedly the smartest people in the world and we welcome you to be one among those smartest minds so let's jump into the method before that let's be very sure who is it that's going to accumulate this wealth because if you accumulate wealth through your body you can enjoy it as long as you are in this body but what happens after you leave this body after you die the wealth is not going to come with you because this body itself is not going to come with you so now the very first step in making this smartest wealth is to realize that you are not this perishable body but you are an imperishable soul that shines like a tiny star in between your eyebrows which is why hindus keep bindis here so it's just a symbol it's just uh, to mark where you actually present so it is the soul that is imperishable so whatever we accumulate with the consciousness that we are the imperishable soul that wealth will also be imperishable it will stay with you forever only you have to spend it you will enjoy it nobody can take that away from you now you have to understand one thing the method that we are going to reveal now is not discovered by any human but by god himself he comes to this world towards the end of kali yuga and teaches us the smartest way to accumulate wealth for the next 21 births and that god before coming here resided in a place called parandam the soul world and that is this god says just as you shine like a star in between your eyebrows i'm also shining like a star but not within anybody's body because i don't take birth like you that's the only difference between you and me i'm also a soul but i am called a supreme soul param atma and you are called souls or jivatma because you exist within your body so this is where god always dwells this particular point of light is called god shiva and this same god is called allah by muslims and the heavenly father parampita by christians so god is one if god shiva is god then who is jesus christ who is krishna they are not gods they all take birth to a woman just like us so nobody who took birth to a woman can be called god nobody who is visible to this naked eye can never be called god so if you apply this definition you can easily say nobody else can be called god except god shiva since he is a point of light to mock his 
existence we worship as link form shiv link form so the top half portion is nothing but the representation of this point of light since we cannot uh, perform puja by pouring milk on this point of light we need a bigger form which is that link in case you wonder what the lower half represents it represents a human body in which god enters to deliver this teaching called raja yoga and that particular old man's body is called brahma so it basically represents the mouth of brahma so he has to deliver this jewels of knowledge through brahma's mouth which is why that lower half of shivling is designed like that so if you look closely you will understand that it is like the mouth so the nectar of knowledge is the nectar of knowledge of god is given through brahma's mouth so that is why after performing puja the liquid that comes out of the puja like milk or water we take that and we keep it here so it, it actually represents the knowledge that we imbibe into our soul because it is inside the soul mind and intellect exists so god says whatever you accumulate spiritually will come with you no matter how many births you take so that's the law of karma if you perform sinful acts you will obviously be punished no matter how many bodies you take similarly if you perform charitable acts you will reap the result of it you will reap the benefit of it as well so the number one charitable act yes remembering god and teaching others how to remember god so how to remember god because nobody knows how god looks like nobody knows his form in no religion it is revealed because it, uh, they were all created by humans but the essence of all vedas is god eventually comes in the end and god has come god has entered and old man's body and he named him brahma and whoever listens to the knowledge of god they are called brahma kumars and kumaris yes this knowledge is available totally free of cost in all brahma kumari center that is spread across the globe and god says god actually reveals the number one secret that you are not a perishable body but an imperishable soul and now he reveals our life history that is the life history of the soul because we know the life history of this body but we do not know what we were before this birth but god knows that so god doesn't reveal every individual's life history but in essence he says about everybody this is this is he reveals about this time cycle called kalpa that consists of 5000 years so the first half of this cycle is heaven and the next half that is the last 2500 years is hell yes we are now living in hell but this same world was heaven once 5000 years back it was heaven that's how god created this world and we souls exist here along with god as tiny stars and we in the beginning take 
birth in heaven as angels or deities and all hindu temples represent the deities that lived 5000 years back that is they represent us in our initial stage of birth so the world was blissful peaceful and very wealthy you know how much wealthy india was it was so wealthy that even the buildings were built out of golden stones such plenty was gold in india 5000 years back it was it was the wealthiest nation 5000 years back but not now we have lost everything you know why we have lost it god says you have lost it because of considering yourself falsely as this perishable body but while you were in heaven you considered yourself as the imperishable soul and you considered yourself as a separate entity that is entirely separate from this body so you had the feeling similar to how a driver feels when he is inside a car he knows he is separate from the car but still he controls the car similarly while you were the deities you had the feeling that you were controlling this body but you were separate from this body and you were shining like a star in between your eyebrows so you were 100 percent soul conscious and zero percent body conscious because of which you didn't fall for lust you didn't fall for anger greed ego attachment so these five vices are omnipresent everywhere in both men and women so these five vices in men and these five these same five vices in women they are combinedly called ten-headed raven and there was nobody with ten heads as such so this same raven is called satan in bible and quran so now this world has become the slave of the robin so the first 2500 years we were deities because we were soul conscious we know who we are In the next 2500 we forget that we are the imperishable soul instead we have mistakenly considered ourselves to be this perishable body because of which we fought for lust anger greed everything else so these five vices are our enemies that that snatches away our wealth, health, peace, everything. And the end result is what the world is right now. And God, in the last hundred years of Kali Yuga, enters an old body, Brahma, and he, he reminds us of our past. You were the deities. You were the Lakshmi and Narayan in the beginning and now you have you are building temples for them and you are worshiping them without even knowing that it represents your form your deity form and he says it is now time to transform you into deities and that's why god has come and that's why he is teaching Raja yoga the essence of Raja yoga is you have to consider yourself separate from this body as an imperishable soul and you have to remember our sweet father god shiva also as a point of light and this place parandam will always be in golden red color so 
to put it simply you have to remember god as uh, god like a star in the golden red colored sky the more you remember him the more your past sins will be washed away because of the sins that you commit through lust anger greed attachment and ego that you have lost all the wealth given by god 5000 years back and to regain it you have to conquer these five vices and the number one vice is lust and it is mentioned in bhagavad gita also so it is impossible for anybody to conquer that by himself because soul has lost its power to regain the original power of the soul we have to connect our mind to god the almighty authority because he gives us might how does he give only when we connect our mind to him we get the might we get the power from him so the more we remember him the more we get power the more we get power the more our souls get purified so the more our souls get purified the more is the wealth that it accumulates for the next 21 births because we take 21 births in heaven and the average lifespan will be 150 years so there will be kingdom in heaven so the first king to rule heaven is Sri Narayan which is why we celebrate opening ceremony of heaven every year in Narayan temple but who makes him Narayan is the one worth worshipping and he is none but one God Shiva and it is by remembering God we accumulate wealth if you continuously remember God and nothing else then it is hundred percent guaranteed that you will accumulate wealth for 21 births because nothing comes just like that nothing happens on its own you have to work for it and now this is the easiest way you are thinking that you are going to become Narayan continuously and you are eventually becoming Narayan. Can there be any method simpler than this? But you have to remember that continuously. And also you have to connect your mind to God Shiva continuously. And you have to remind yourself continuously that you are not this body. You are an imperishable soul. You have to constantly remind yourself night and day. So the more work you put on it, the more benefit you are going to reap out of it. And your soul will enjoy it no matter how many births you take. So if you come, if you take birth yearly in heaven, you will enjoy the whole heaven. So for that you have to become 100% pure. But if you have become only 80% pure, for instance, then you won't come in the beginning but you will enter in the middle so you will enjoy heaven only halfway so if you're smart you have to come in the beginning itself not only that you have to become king because there will be king queen uh, the subjects the servants so and so it is through this same raja yoga one becomes Narayan other become servant god doesn't show any partiality it is your effort that creates the difference so <coughs> you should not neglect this teaching if you neglect this it is you who lose eventually god doesn't benefit or lose anything out of this because he doesn't enter heaven so that's why you will never see God Shiva with crown in his head. But you will see all other Hindu deities with crown. Because he makes us, his children, into kings and queens. And he doesn't enjoy that. That's why God Shiva is called 
love love is god so this is the only way to earn income for the next 21 birth and this is the easiest way as well not only for the next 21 births but also in this birth you can escape all the punishments that you uh, otherwise have to incur if you have not washed the way through this Raja Yoga that is by connecting your mind to God so this is the biggest secret only God knows and he is revealing that to us and we are revealing that to you eventually and it is your duty to reveal that to everybody else the more you reveal to others more is the chance that you are making others to enter heaven so this is the biggest charity and do you get any reward for that yes of course the more subjects you bring to heaven more is the chance you are becoming the king of kings and there's no need to mention how much you are worshipped in hell in temples right so in heaven there won't be any worship there won't be any religions because everybody will be happy there so only when we suffer we start searching for god to get peace but we all will be blissful and peaceful while we were in heaven but when we enter hell when we start falling for lust and start suffering sorrow we start searching for god we start building temples we start writing scriptures we start creating religions what's the next what is the net result of that pure confusion so god has come to rescue us from all these confusions and make us to connect our mind with one god and that's the only way to purify us and if we purify ourselves through the method god teaches we will enter heaven if you don't then as a result of the law of karma we'll have to get punishment for our past sins and we will eventually be taken out of our bodies back to our home sweet parandam and we will stay there we will not take birth in heaven we will just stay there so for the first 2500 years we will be staying there and once the world turns to hell only then we will take birth so there is no escape from hell at all so this is the final moment of hell so if we have seen the final moment of hell why can't we see the beginning of heaven right so we have to it's it's our birthright it's our own father eternal father god shiva who comes and teaches us so why should we neglect it sooner the better rush right now to the nearest brahmakumari center it spread across the globe it is taught totally free of cost because it is your father god shiva who is teaching them not the religious preachers so rush to the center as soon as possible and as a result welcome to heaven om shanti thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel uh, so that you can get uh, latest videos not only that also share this so that you are actually helping this soul reap its wealth for the next 21 births you can think of any other donation better than this donation of true knowledge given directly by god om shanti thanks for watching